very much times I'm asked this question that how much DSA should be done? Like obviously nothing is enough, but let's say if someone wants to just do the bare minimum of DSA, then should they be doing these code shift problems, code forces problems, like competitive coding as well, or is doing lead code and around 600, 700 problems enough for doing DSA? I would say 600, 700 is also too much of problems. You need a lot of time to solve so many questions, right? So again, there are certain shortcuts available in the market. So it's one of them is like my course on coding minutes. I have two courses, uh, DSA Essentials, which teaches you the basics of data structures from arrays to graphs. And secondly, if you know the basics, there is a DSA level of course, which teaches you, which shows you a flavor of interview problems on different topics. What are the kind of problems in based on heap, hash tables, DP, graphs, uh, greedy algorithms, right? So it gives you a flavor or gist of the interview questions across all topics. And there are certain books also which are popular. One is Cracking the uh, Coding Interview by Gail Lackman. It has good a good collection of around 150 to 200 problems. You can do that book. There is a book by Narsima Karumanji. It is also a good book. So it also has uh, all the classical interview problems that are good enough to analyze the patterns which are frequently uh, used in problems. Only, right? So if you do like these courses or these books, I think it's a good start otherwise if you're enjoying it if you have time then you can dive as much deep as you want into competitive programming right right from your experience Pratik, what have you observed that what are the most sort of asked topics if you talk about companies while hiring in india what are the most asked frequently asked topics of dsa see as a like interviewer is free to ask anything right so you cannot read what interviewer right. is going to ask but given like the competition is increasing, many people are preparing for DSA and other topics. So it is more likely that the more trickier uh, topics would be asked. Like so in DSA, we consider graphs as a tricky, to tricky topic, dynamic programming as a tricky topic because they they are not hard, but they test your thinking, right? So you have to think a little more while solving problems on graphs, dynamic programming. And there could be problems which are using mix and match of concepts, maybe arrays combined with sliding right. window and hashing, something of that can on. So less of a straightforward problems. So more tricky problems can be asked, right? I'm not saying interviews will be hard. So generally what I have felt, I've given six, seven rounds of DSA while uh, I was getting shortlisted for Google. So I did clear all the rounds. So I, what I felt the level of problems was medium, but uh, you need like certain logical thinking to approach those problems. Okay, so I did some problems in a brute way. Some I was able to optimize a little better using binary search or using some other data structure. So think of data structures and algorithm as a tool to so pro solve problems. Okay, so so if you think, if you start thinking, okay, given this problem, what are the tools I can use? Right. So certain problems I will suggest they will have this wording in the question: find minimum of the maximum sum of something. Right or do maximum of the minimum of something. So there are many min-max optimization problems, right? So one of, I was also asked in, in a Google interview. So what I knew from my experience was that min-max optimization problems are generally dynamic programming problems or their binary search problems. So you have to narrow down the approach by looking at the problem statement. Right. Can this problem solved using graph? Can I solve it using DP? Can it solve using sorting? So you have to think of iterate on the possible scenarios in your mind and then try to hit one of the solutions which you think will work well right so this is how i do it 